body. This is Jack Benny, that gray-haired carrier pigeon talking. <laughs> Uncle Sam has clipped an important message on my ankle, and I'm going to give it to you right now. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to win this war. And we'll win it a lot sooner if we all line up solidly behind our armed forces and keep them supplied with all the tanks and planes and guns and ships they need to do this tremendous job. And we can do that by buying war savings bonds. We must put aside one out of every $10 we make, 10% of our income, and buy war savings bonds. That's our quota, and let's meet it with the same determination that our boys are meeting the enemy. Buy those bonds and buy them right now. Thank you. The Jell-O program, presented by Jell-O and Jell-O Pudding, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens the program with Jump for Joy. <laughs> When you take a package of Jell-O off the pantry shelf these days and make up a grand Jell-O dessert, you can count on something extra delicious. Yes, extra delicious, extra rich, more flavorful and more enjoyable. Because today, Jell-O's flavor is locked in. Locked right into the tiny Jell-O particles by Jell-O's new and exclusive process. This process protects Jell-O's tempting goodness, makes it even more of a delight. Never was Jell-O more enticing, more attractive looking than it is today. And thanks to Jell-O's new process that locks in the flavor, Jell-O now tastes better than ever. It's a new high in tangy, zestful flavor. Flavor as refreshing as the juicy ripe fruit itself. But let your very next package of Jell-O prove it. Open the package. Notice that there's no telltale aroma. No sign of escaping fragrance and flavor. Then dissolve the Jell-O, and lo and behold, out will come Jell-O's captive goodness in a perfect flood of rich flavor. Get Jell-O tomorrow, friends, and see if you don't agree that Jell-O's locked-in flavor really is extra delicious. was Jump for Joy, played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, Jack Benny has started work on his new picture with Ann Sheridan. So tonight, we would like to show you what happened when the whole gang paid Jack a visit at Warner Brothers Studio yesterday. Jack told us to come over to his dressing room about 9 a.m. and said that he'd take a photo. My mama done told me, son... A woman will sweet talk and give you the big eye. But when the sweet talk is done... Now, where where did I put that script? A woman's a two-faced, a worrisome thing to leave you to sing the blues in an eye. Now, where's that script? I have to learn my scene with Ann Sheridan. It's very important. From Natchez to Mobile, from Memphis to St. Joe. St. Joe. They love me there. <laughs> oh, oh, here it is. Wherever the four winds... Rochester, I'm sorry to interrupt your sunrise serenade, but if you don't mind, I wish you'd help me rehearse my lines for today. Here's your part. Uh, you be Miss Sheridan. Oh, boss. <laughs> I just want you to read her lines so I can learn mine. Now, this is a sequence where I propose. It's a very tender love scene. Now, let's get going. Well, as a rule, I don't get romantic until about dusk. <laughs> now, quit stalling. You're going to be Ann Sheridan, and I'm going to propose to you. Okay, get down on your knees and let's go. Don't have to get down on my knees. That's old-fashioned. Now, start here on page 23. You're Connie, and I'm Bill. Yes, sir. I speak first. So you're seated in the patio wearing a white organdy gown, and you're sipping a lemonade. Lemonade? Yeah. <laughs> and you're in a very gay mood. Can't you make that a Tom Collins lemonade depression? <laughs> Rochester, I'm not interested in your reaction to liquids. Now, pay attention. 
Now, Bill enters through the French doors. That's me. <clears throat> Connie. Connie, I've come back. Come back to ask you a question that means more to me than life itself. What is it, my sweet? <laughs> Connie, Connie, will you marry me? But, boss, this is so sudden. That bill. That bill, this is so sudden. Now, read your next line. Okay. <clears throat> you look tired, Bill. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Well, Connie, I'm waiting for your answer. The answer that will fill my heart with joy. A girl shouldn't rush into these things, Bill. First, I'll have to ask Mater and Pater. Who are they? That's your mother and father in Latin. You see, you're a uh, society girl. Oh! Oh! oh, oh. <laughs> now, let's continue. Connie. Connie, please say yes and make me the happiest man in the world. Yes, Bill, I'll marry you. Connie, my very own. Bill, embarrass me. That's embrace me. <laughs> the word is embrace. Oh, Connie, you've made me the happiest. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. What's Rochester doing on your lap? Huh? It's quite all right, Miss Livingston. He just asked me to marry him. All right, Rochester. I think I know the scene. You can start getting my clothes ready. Yes, Bill. I'm boss now. Well, Mary, how do you like this dressing room? It's all right, isn't it? It sure is swanky. How'd you ever get such a gorgeous layout? Well, uh, well, it isn't mine exactly. What? As soon as Mr. Errol Flynn is over his cold, out we go. <laughs> You mean this is Errol Flynn's dressing room? I don't care whose it is. I'm not going to dress in the boiler room anymore. I don't blame you. That steam hissing must remind you of an audience. It's not bad. It's too hot down there. <laughs> Say, Jack, remember that awful dressing room you had at Paramount? Paramount. They hate me there. <laughs> I'll never forget that dump they gave me to dress in. Every time I'd walk in the door, a loose board would smack me right in the face. It was going out that bothered me. <laughs> me too, come to think of it. Come in. Oh, it's my makeup man. Hello, Gordon. Hello, Mr. Benny. Are we ready for our daily tussle with Father Time? <laughs> Just, just make me up and don't get smart. Okay. Now, where did I put my trowel? You don't have to fill in every wrinkle. Just put a little powder on me. Now, get going. He was on the phone, Rochester. Yes, sir. Hello? Who? It's a Miss Hayden calling for Mr. Flynn, boss. A girl, eh? Oh, oh I'll, I'll take it. Oh, Jack, for heaven's sake. Quiet, Mary. Flynn knows some pretty nice girls. Hello. Yes, yes, Miss Hayden. <laughs> no, no, this is not Errol Flynn. Not even a reasonable facsimile. <laughs> Mary, you see, Errol's in bed with a cold. A cold. But... but... But, Miss Hayden, if, uh, if you're not doing anything tonight, uh, how, about, uh, how about dining with me? And, uh, and, uh... And pay half the check. And pay half the check. Mary! <laughs> now, look, Miss Hayden. Hello? Hello? Hello, Miss Hayden? Hello? Darn you, Mary, she hung up. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, Gordon, let's get going. 
Make me look beautiful. You're kidding, of course. <laughs> I am not. Do a good job. Mary, the next time I'm talking on the phone and you interrupt me, you're going to get right out of this studio. Now, believe me. I'm... Gordon, Gordon, for heaven's sake. What's the matter now? Don't put so much makeup on my chin. Yesterday you buried my dimple. I did? Yes. Everybody was asking for it. <laughs> now be careful. Say, Jack, why don't you have them darken your hair? No, Mary, I like those gray streaks running through it. It makes me look mature. You can't mean Victor. <laughs> Mary, leave me alone, will you? Say, Gordon, I'd appreciate it if you take that eyebrow pencil out of my ear. There's a table to lay it on. Say, Jack. What? Where did Rochester get that beautiful watch? Where? Well, I'll be done. Oh, Rochester! Yeah, boy! What are you doing with Mr. Flynn's wristwatch? I'm modeling it! Look, just because we're using Errol Flynn's dressing room, we don't have to Well, take... look who's here. Oh, hello, boy. Hello, Jack. Hello, hello Mary. Hi, it's Jackson. Say, fellas, I've been waiting for you. Did you have any trouble getting in the gate? No, we just put a little Vaseline on Wilson and squeezed him through. <laughs> <laughs> Never a straight line with that hair, is it? <laughs> oh, you're as sharp as a doorknob. Hey, uh, Jack, are you really going to work with Ann Sheridan today? <laughs> What was that, Don? I say, are you really going to work with Ann Sheridan today? I sure am, Don. We're going to do our big love scene where I propose to her. Oh, boy, Ann Sheridan. Do you kiss her, Mr. Benny? Well, of course, Dennis. Gosh, right after you kiss her, can I kiss you? <laughs> Definitely not. No use waiting. I've got to have a talk with that kid. <laughs> uh, see who that is, Rochester. Hello? Who? It's a Miss Wilkins, boss. Call Mr. Flynn. I'll take it. I'll take oh, it. Oh, Jack. Quiet. Hello? <laughs> yes? Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Wilkins. Mr. Flynn is home with a cold. But... Well, I'll be glad to take you to dinner. I'm a pal of his. You'll have to guess. No. 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 No, it's Jack Benny. Hello? 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 Hello, Miss Wilkins? Hello? Hello? Darn that operator. She cut us off. <laughs> And, and just as I was doing so good. You and Hitler. Well, I was. See, that girl had a beautiful voice. Ready for you in a set, Mr. Benny? Okay, come on, kids. We're all going over to stage seven. So long, Rochester. So long. Oh, see, boss, what'll I do if any more of Mr. Flynn's girlfriends call us? I uh, have the call transferred to me on stage seven. Okay. <laughs> You're going to get hooked for a meal yet? <laughs> the idea, exactly. See you later. Which way do we go, Jack? Uh, down the street to our right. Stick close, Dennis. Gee, I hope I don't faint when I meet Aunt Sheridan. Why should you faint? Well, I saw her in King's Row, and she was so beautiful, I toppled right out of my seat. You did? It was all right, though. I told my girl it was indigestion. <laughs> well, that was quick thinking. To our left here, fellas. To our left, right here. Here's the stage, right over there. Well, hello there. Hello, Jack. How are things going? Fine, fine. Good. Good. How, How do you like working, working with Ann Sheridan? Oh, swell, swell. Glad, Glad to hear it. it. So long, Jack. So long. Say, Jack, who are those fellas? The Warner Brothers. <laughs> Everybody, let's go inside. And listen, I don't want any giggling or wisecracks while I'm emoting. It throws me. Now, remember that, fellas.
Ah, pretty big stage, isn't it? Just a minute there. Have you got passing? <laughs> well, uh... you gotta have passes, you know. Come to regulation. Well, uh, this isn't uh, one of my... I mean, this isn't a regular tour. These people are guests of mine. This way, fellas. I don't make the rules, you oh, know. Oh, shut up. <laughs> well, come on, kids. Jack, who's that tall fellow over there biting his nails? Where? Oh, that's Mr. William Keeley, my director. He's just a bundle of nerves. Pretty jittery, huh? You said it. I have yet to see a director of yours that they didn't have to carry out screaming. <laughs> It's not all my fault. Miss Sheridan muffs plenty of lines, too. Hey, Jackson, you sure they ain't a part in this picture for me? For you? What could you do, Phil? Well, you're doing a scene today where you propose to Aunt Sheridan, ain't you? That's right. I do propose to her. But where do you come in? Well, just as she says no, I ought to crawl out from under the Davenport. <laughs> She's going to say yes. That's the way it's written. Uh-oh. Jiggers, fellas. Uh, here comes the director. Well, hello, Mr. Keeley. Oh, hello, Jack. Paying us a little visit? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm in the picture. So absent-minded. <laughs> Uh, say, I've got a surprise for you, Mr. Keeley. I know my lines today. Good. Then I can send this baseball bat back to the prop room. <laughs> oh, I, all means. You won't have to use force today. <laughs> uh, by the way, Mr. Keeley, I'd like you to meet a few friends of mine. Now, Jack, I warned you time and again about bringing sightseeing tours through the studio. Oh, this isn't one of my... I mean, this isn't a tour today. <laughs> Mr. Keeley, this is my radio gang. Yeah? Oh, I'm glad to know you all. How, How are you doing, Keeley? Nice to see you. Well, I'm raring to go, Mr. Keeley. Shall we get started? Yes, in a minute. And incidentally, Jack, when we shoot the scene today, I wish you wouldn't stare right into the camera. <laughs> uh, what? In every shot, you seem to be looking for a seat in the audience. <laughs> Oh, well, I'll, uh, I'll watch it. Please do. I'll see you all later. So long. Right, 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 right. Now, this was stage seven, folks. We will now proceed to stage eight, where I will show... Whoop! <laughs> Pardon me, I'm so nervous. I got a little confused there. Now, where's Anne? I want you to meet her. Hmm? Oh, Jack, isn't that Miss Sheridan standing over there by the camera? Oh, yes, yes, that's Anne. Excuse me, fellas, I'm going over and break the ice. Ice around Sheridan? Oh, Jackson, no. <laughs> I'll be back in a minute. Hmm. I'll look in the camera if I want to. Never saw a director yet that wasn't jealous of me. Well, well, well. Good morning, Ann. Oh, hello, Jack. <laughs> well, Ann, you're certainly looking marvelous this morning. Thanks, Jack. You're looking, too. <laughs> You, you left out a word there, but it's, it's all right. <laughs> See, you're the, you're the cutest thing. Jack, will you please stop pinching my cheeks? It's too early in the morning for coochie coo. <laughs> Pardon me, I always do that, don't I? Oh, say, Anne, did you get to the uh, bunch of violets I left in your dressing room this morning? Yes, Jack, they were lovely. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad. Uh, but you mustn't do that anymore. You've been sending flowers to me every day. Oh, well, it's only a gesture, really. It's not as if there were anything serious between us. Hey, Anne? Hmm? <laughs> Jack, will you please stop running your hands through my hair? Well, can I help it? <laughs> I'm only human. <laughs> Oh, by the way, Ann, would you mind meeting some people at that little group standing over there, you know? Oh, I'd be glad to. Hmm. Business is pretty bad today, isn't it, Jack? <laughs> oh, these aren't tourists, Ann. They're the members of my Jell-O show. Come on, I'll introduce you. 
<laughs> and you thought those violets meant that I was stuck on you or something. <laughs> Silly girl. Jack, don't skip. Let's just walk. Well, I'm as frisky as a lamb today. I don't know. Well, fellas, here she is. And this is Don Wilson, our announcer. Hello, Don. Oh, this is a pleasure, Miss Sheridan. And this is Phil Harris, our band leader. Glad to meet you, Miss Sheridan. Well, hello, Phil. I've seen you so often, I feel I almost know you. Oh, down to Biltmore Bow, huh? No, at Maisie's Beauty Parlor. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him blush. Now, Anne, uh, Anne, this is Dennis Day, our young tenor. Hello, Miss Sheridan. This is the happiest moment of my life, by golly. <laughs> Well, you've met her, Dennis. Are you thrilled? Please, don't talk to me for a minute. <laughs> I didn't know the kid was so emotional. Uh, pardon me, Anne. I'm Mary Livingston. Jack's too stupid to introduce me first. I'm not stupid. I just forgot. Well, I'm happy to know you, Mary. I've enjoyed you on all the programs. Thanks. By the way, how's Jack been behaving? Oh, he's been sending me violets and pinching my cheeks and skipping all over the place. I know the whole routine. <laughs> Mary. But believe me, Anne, he's harmless. Oh, yeah? <laughs> harmless, eh? Who chased Hetty Lamar all around the swimming pool at the Beverly Wills here? Me. Sure you chased her. She had your bathing cap. <laughs> Well, they're tough to get now. Oh, say, fellas, here comes my cameraman, Ernie Haller. Hello, Ernie. <laughs> hmm, what a crew. Oh, and Jack. We're ready for the scene now. Okay, Mr. Keeley. Quiet, Quiet everybody. Quiet, Quiet on the set. <laughs> Gee, those Warner Brothers are always on the job. <laughs> nice of them to help out like that. Now, Jack, this is the scene where you and Anne have been married one month, and you've just had your first quarrel. Married? But, Mr. Keeley, I learned the proposal scene. I don't know this other scene at all. Oh, for Pete's sake. Well, here's another day shot to... Mr. Keeley! <laughs> Please. And don't worry, I'll get the scene. After all, I'm an ad-lib comedian. Then why don't you answer Fred Allen once in a while? <laughs> because in order to answer him, I'd have to listen to his program. And he's not going to suck me in that way. <laughs> he's so smart. Well, he was smart enough to put a finish on your play last week. Well, I'm glad he did, because we didn't have one. <laughs> now, come on, are we making a picture around here or not? Sometimes I wonder. Oh. Now, here's the idea of the scene. You and Anne have quarreled for the first time. She's begging you to forgive her, but you remain adamant. Okay. I what? <laughs> adamant. You're cold and unresponsive. Oh, 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 adamant, adamant. Hmm. Now, let's run over it. Quiet for rehearsal, please. Quiet! Quiet, Quiet for rehearsal! Hmm. <laughs> Those Warner Brothers, they're so conscientious. <laughs> now, the scene is after dinner in your living room. And you're trying to make up with Jack, but he's reading the evening paper and ignoring you. Ignoring Anne? Okay, I'll try. All right, let's go. <laughs> Anne, you have the first speech. Yes, Mr. Dillick. Oh, Bill. Bill, why must you be so stubborn? Is a silly little quarrel going to ruin our happiness and tear down all that we've struggled for? It's not fair, Bill. It's not fair. <laughs> Speak to me, Bill. And I want the truth. Don't you love me anymore? No, Connie. I'm afraid this is the end. Oh, my Aunt Molly. <laughs> Jack, Jack, put some feeling into the line. You're mad at the girl. Mad at Anne? Now read your line again. Anne. Okay, I'll try. <laughs> All right. Speak to me, Bill, and I want you to know the truth. Don't you love me anymore? No, Connie. I'm afraid this is the end. 
I gotta wait around what you have. <laughs> what in heaven's name was that? Well, didn't I... Didn't I do it right, Mr. Keeley? Oh, if I only had a little chicken farm in Ventura. <laughs> well, for Pete's sake, what's wrong now? Jack, you're not a gangster. You're the girl's husband. You just had a little quarrel, that's all. Okay, okay. Let go of my necktie. Please. All right, Ann. Continue with the scene, please. Mm, for a bunch of violets, I have to go through this. <laughs> Sorry, Ann. Let's go on. Bill, I know this quarrel has been all my fault, and I'm terribly sorry. Let's kiss and make up. No, Connie. It is too late. It's not too late, Bill. It's not too late. Please, dear, take me in your arms, and let the ashes of our love burst into flame once more. Ooh, what she said. <laughs> Dennis All right, Tolly I forgive you Kiss me, my love Kiss me Jack, you're not supposed to kiss her I know what I'm doing Connie, kiss me Jack, Jack, stick to the script The heck with the script Dan, I mean Connie I love you Kiss me <laughs> Me. Holy smoke, she fainted. <laughs> fainted, eh? Ha, ha, ha. Now let Fred Allen finish this. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Springtime, Fred's, is salad time. And what better way to celebrate the season than with a crisp vegetable salad made with fast tangy lemon jello? It's as simple as can be to make. All you do is just dissolve a package of lemon jello in one pint of hot water. Next, add one tablespoon of vinegar and a dash of salt and chill until slightly thickened. Then fold in one cup each of diced cucumber, sliced radishes, and sliced young onions. Mold and serve on lettuce. And believe me, there's a perfect salad. A delightful combination of cool, crisp vegetables nestling in a shimmering mold of golden lemon jello. Don't miss trying it soon. Get several packages of lemon jello tomorrow. And when you do, be sure to ask for genuine jello because jello's locked in flavor is extra rich. This is the last number of the 31st program in the current Jell-O series, and we will be with you again next Sunday night, broadcasting for the boys at Mather Field. Uh, thank you, Mr. Keeley and Miss Sheridan, for appearing with us tonight. Oh, say, Ann, I think it's only fair to let the folks in on a secret. You really didn't faint when I kissed you. No, but you nearly did. <laughs> <laughs> See, I did at that. Good night, folks. <laughs> is written by Bill Maher and Ed Beline and is broadcast each week by shortwave to our armed forces throughout the world.